Start recording. Okay, I just stumbled upon this page called Math Antics. And I just wanted to look at his videos. So he has 1.22 million subscribers. Oh my God. Videos sort by most popular. So the most popular video on his site is Long Division with 7.2 million views. Oh my God. Long Division is such a pain. I recommend using a calculator. Unless of course you're a student, in which case you gotta learn how to do this. So the interesting thing about Long Division is it's even more expensive for a computer. Like you may have a two gigahertz computer processor two gigahertz, which means uh, two billion cycles per second. So the frequency of the of your computer might be two billion cycles per second, where maybe it can do addition and multiplication, two billion per second. But it, division is actually more expensive. It actually takes multiple clock cycles, maybe four or more clock cycles. So a lot of times when you're programming a computer, you wanna to try to avoid division. One example is if you're scaling a vector say you need to normalize a vector and maybe the vector has a million elements, you wouldn't divide by the magnitude a million times, you would pre-compute the reciprocal and then multiply everything in the vector by a million times. But I doubt that's what he's talking about here. He's probably just showing you how to do the long division. Percents, that's his number two video at 4.4 million views. So the interesting thing I was watching this video that was talking about, oh, the sacred 51% and that like 51% was so sacred you had to do uh, over 51% service. But the cool thing about that is 51% is totally arbitrary. Just It's just derived from we have a base 10 number system. So half of 100 is 50. So what you really, the precise way of saying it is over 50%. Um, 51% is completely meaningless because aliens may have base 12 and then they may say 73% for, you know, one more than, or well, percent wouldn't be the right word, but 73 out of 144 and seven, long story short, you want to say more than half, not just adding one to some arbitrary base 10 or base 100 system we have. Math Antics Basic Division, oh God. Blah, blah, blah. Math Antics Long Division, yeah, that's for students. Um, so, oh, convert any fraction to a decimal. Oh, but going the other way is actually interesting. Converting a decimal to a fraction. So if you have a decimal, a terminating decimal, it's easy to convert it to a fraction, you just you know, shift the decimal point over time and put it over like one followed by a bunch of zeros. You know, you're multiplying the numerator and the denominator by some power of 10, and then that's the fraction, and then you can reduce the lowest terms. But the interesting case is, what if you have a repeating decimal? Um, I should actually make a video on that. It's very interesting. Instead of putting it over a, a hundred, you end up putting it over like nine, 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 nine. However, the, if you have like, 0.727272, it would be 72 over 99. And there's an interesting, uh, some interesting math going on with that. What is this? 3.4 million adding and subtracting fractions. Oh God. Multiplying fractions, simplify. So millions and millions of views. I guess like kids are turning to this guy for how to do math. Um, math area multiplying so if you think about it uh multiplication is is strictly harder than addition say if we had a, a hundred we were adding two 100 digit numbers for addition you know the amount of work we have to do is like basically 100 single digit additions but uh you have to do a lot more multiplications. Multiplications is more like quadratic in the number of digits you have.
but computers are, the computer chips are, are still optimized for multiplication. It's it's division that but well that's um uh floating point multiplication. Once you go to arbitrary precision multiplication, all bets are off, then it starts becoming expensive. Algebra area, he's got a pi in there, pi r squared, that's nice. Volume, I just watched his video on volume. One thing he mentions is the the area of these kind of figures where you're extruding, you take a 2D figure and you extrude it. The area is just the area of the base times the height. But then he also mentions for a cone, the area is one third the base times the height. So that, that one third is actually very interesting. You might say, well, the area of a cone should be the average cross-sectional area times the height. And okay, the average of the base is some area. The average of the point is zero. So the average area should be one half the area of the base times the height, but it's actually a third. So that's actually a really cool problem. And that has to do with, because we're not averaging something linear, the area varies quadratically along the axis. So you're averaging a quadratic function rather than a linear function. And so averaging x squared is where the one third comes from. So I'm gonna make a video on that. That's actually very interesting. Common denominators, oh God, yeah, that's for students. Dividing fractions, decimals, balance, angle basics. Oh, angles are kind of interesting. Like there's 360 degrees in the circle. But that again, that's completely arbitrary. If we were to encounter aliens and we said, oh, there's 360 degrees in a circle, they wouldn't know what the heck we're talking about because 360 degrees is a terrestrial thing. The thing they would know, they would have stumbled upon radians. So a more natural way to describe angles is in terms of radians, two pi radians, because that makes the Taylor series for sine and cosine very simple. So they would have encountered that simple parameterization of a circle, ratios and rates, multi-digit subtraction, solving equations, adding mixed numbers, pi, yeah, that's a nice one. So mean, median, mode. So I think this guy has like a bunch of videos for elementary school children, I guess going into high school also proportions like this algebra, I guess this looks like for high school students. Oh, look at this uh, rounding. He's got the uh, stack of oranges here. So that's nice. Um, oh, rounding. I w maybe he's estimating how many oranges there are. I made the video on counting cannonballs. So we're summing up, uh, oranges here. So this is one squared plus two squared plus three squared. Let's see, can we, oh no. Oh, Let's see, can we count one, two, three, four, five. Ah, oh, shoot. I didn't want to click on that thing. You have, ah, round. Uh, where are my videos? Ah, oh, now I got myself in a bunch. I'm all scrambled up. Sort by popularity, control F, round. Now it doesn't find it? I was just looking at it. Oh, it's like, okay, there it is, rounding. I was in the middle of counting how many uh, oranges there were. I wanted to tell him the exact number of oranges. Okay, I was trying to counting, but again, I guess I clicked when I was counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's the sum of the first ten cubes. Okay, now let's put myself to the test. We got the integral term. The integral of x squared is x cubed over three, so it's ten cubed over three. Then we've got the triangle term. The triangle term is, boy, this is really putting me to the test, 
is the last term. So the last term is uh, 10 squared, 100 over 2, so 50. And then um, we know the sum of the coefficients has to be 1. So the first, the leading coefficient is 1 third, then 1 half. So there's 1 sixth. So it's 1 sixth times n. So let me see if I can do that for you on a calculator here. Um, calculator. Okay, so 10 uh, cubed divided by 3. That's, the, well, that's what I've been calling the calculus term, the integral term, plus half the last term. The last term is 10 squared, so last plus 50. Oops, plus 50. Now plus uh, n over 6, so that should be plus 10 over 6, plus 10 divided by 6 equals 385 blip. Who needs rounding? 385 oranges, buddy. Okay, let's see if we can shrink this down. Thanks to the counting cannonballs video. Well, there's his rounding. Math antics angles and degrees. Yeah, it's back to my beef with 360 degrees. Nothing special about 360 degrees. It's totally terrestrial. Comparing fractions. Yeah, that's a good one. How do you know which fraction is bigger? You cross multiply and see which the numerator side is bigger. Um, distributive property, negative numbers. Yeah. For a while, mankind struggled with the existence of negative numbers. How can you have a negative number of apples? Place value, polygon, prime factorization. That's a good one. Fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Every integer has a unique factorization in terms of prime numbers, decimals, quadrilaterals. Oh, this is a good one. There's one that's called Hero's Formula, where if you know the lengths of the side, the four lengths of a side of a quadrilateral, there's a nice formula for the area of the quadrilateral called Hero's Formula or Heron's Formula. But I doubt he's going to talk about that. That's like an advanced high school thing. Uh, points, lines, and planes. Functions. Uh, this is good stuff. Everybody should know that. Factoring. Oh, this is a hard, hard problem. This is why... Uh, Internet encryption works is because factoring is hard. It's like when they ask you a factor number, you're like, oh man, that's so hard. Imagine they gave you a 1,000 digit number and asked you to factor it, and it's really hard. And that's the premise of encryption is that factoring is hard. Multiplication is easy. Going in the forward direction is easy. Going in the reverse direction is very hard. Even, odd, I like that. Mixed numbers, converting any fraction, Pythagorean theorem, yay! I have a video on that on Einstein's proof of the Pythagorean theorem. It's absolutely brilliant. Math antics, fractions, multi-digit addition, back to that, percents, polynomials, oh, okay. Oh, he's got some... Uh, Laws of exponents here. Arithmetic, oh, dividing by zero, that's good. When I was in France, we were in Nice taking the uh, public transportation, and one of the stops was L'Hôpital. So I, I kept wanting to make a on-site video of L'Hôpital's rule, which deals with indeterminate form zero over zero. Sometimes zero over zero is undefined. Sometimes zero over zero is finite. Sometimes zero over zero is infinite. It depends how the limit, depends on the growth rate of the numerator and denominator. And L'Hopital's rule uh, deals with that. But I doubt he's talking about that. Um, linear functions. Linear functions rule. That's what dominates calculus and physics. We turn complicated things into linear functions. Linearization, Taylor's theorem. Locally, curves behave like lines, and that's what we use all the time to approximate things. Metric system, that's nice. Oh, the metric system, been wanting to make a video on converting kilometers into miles. 
because there's this beautiful property of uh, 1.6 kilometers are a mile, or conversely, 0.6 miles are a kilometer. So there's this nice symmetry of 1.6 and 0.6, and that's related to the golden ratio, uh, which has the property that one over the golden ratio, you either have 1.6 blah, 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 or 0 0.6 blah, 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 where the, where the fraction continues indefinitely. So that's a nice relation to the golden ratio. Working with parts, the radical sign, radical dude. Like every time I see the Vans t-shirt, to me it looks like radical ANS, right square root of your answer. Mm. Fractions are division, probability. Monte Carlo, dude. Sounds like he's a big Monte Carlo fan. Um, distance, exponentials. That's nice. Oh, exponents, scientific notation. Yeah, that's a good one. That's uh, always nice. And that's, so his least popular video is on absolute value. Okay. But you got to deal with absolute value. What is the magnitude of things? And this is useful to take uh, vector spaces into scalar spaces, some kind of norm. So that's his videos uh, on, on simple stuff. He's got 1.2 million subscribers. I have 51 subscribers. There you go. Got to look at the uh, tail of the distribution. He's in the fat part of the distribution, catering to the masses. I'm shooting for the tail of the distribution. And let's see, minimize. There's a calculator, 385 oranges. Hopefully we got that right a stack of uh, 10 layers of oranges and beautiful Nepali coast on Kauai. Oh, how'd you like to go to that beach, man? I want to go there. Pause, stop, blip, 